and good night, everyone. Oh my gosh, we had some technical difficulties there, but thank you so much for tuning in regardless. Um, today is show five of the Her Warrior um, Initiative, a project that um, was voted because um, in the interest of helping ladies fight their PCOS um, struggles. Um, the her in her warrior is not only the pronoun her, but it means holistic healing, embracing self, and reclaiming your life. Now, on my journey of trying to overcome PCOS, I started to speak to a lot of ladies, and I recognize that they are struggling. And one of the things that a lot of us struggle with, even myself, still is nutrition. I think that's the hardest thing for us to overcome in terms of dealing with um, diet. Either we are not consistent, we don't know what to eat, we are eating the wrong thing, or we're not eating enough. And of lately, I have been hearing about you should be eating to suit your blood type. All this confusion about what to eat. So to help us kind of clarify some stuff and make things simpler, Jeremy Wilson has decided to you know, help us with some information here. Now, Jeremy is a nutritional coach and uh, um, I think educator and trainer. So he's going to tell us a bit more about himself when I bring him on. And he's also going to give us some insights in terms of what we should be eating to help us fight this PCOS burden that we are faced with. So help me welcome Jeremy. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for being so patient with our technical drama there. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> A while ago. Uh, so, Jeremy, I'm not too sure if I introduced you the right way. So, just tell us a bit before we go into it who you are. To give us a little short snippet thing about you. Okay. So, good night, all, and good night, Mel. Melissa. Thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure to share and to help people in this journey and this 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 difficult task of nutrition. <laughs> all right. Um, I, I, my, my whole journey with nutrition or any passion for wellness and fitness would have started when I became a physical training instructor somewhere in 2007. Uh, basically, I was basically like the, the, the person on station. And I was in the military at the time, helping people with fitness, helping people with wellness. I had a lot of um, healthy nicknames, green tea, the weak man, you know, a lot of healthy um, you know, terms and nicknames and so on. And, um, you know, I just, from there, I went on, you know, deeper. I went to university, I did physical education, and then I went on to get um, certified in nutrition. And, you know, so I just keep building on the passion. But it so happened that in the military, uh, specifically the Air Guard, I happened to be a fitness instructor, a nutrition coach, and an aircraft engineer. So what happened was I was able to see um, from aviation, some of the principles from aviation, I find that it was so pertinent and, and, and relevant to health and wellness because the aviation industry is very, very proactive. And one thing about health and wellness, you find that is something that most of us tend, generally speaking, tend to put on the back burner, um, you know. And uh, I think that, for example, I'll give you an example of what I'm seeing. Say the, the aircraft flies 25 hours there's a special inspection at that time. If it, if it fly for three days, is a pre-flight inspection. There's so much inspections because at the end of the day, as they say, you can't park in the sky. You know, so two unrelated fields, but um, because, because of the proactive nature of aviation, I saw it um, fit in for health and wellness. And most of us should try to be more proactive with our health. And, you know, yes, the exercise, the nutrition, all of these are ways that we could be proactive, you know. And, and, and what I want to say is, like, in aviation, I think the safety system, it's like um, for every million movement, they may have accidents. Now, think about that. Every million movement. I mean, sometimes in Trinidad, just people moving from right there to there with, with cars and there's accidents all over the place. Yeah. But aviation is, yes, very, very safe. It's safer to fly than safer to be in a car. The risk factors are more catastrophic, but the safety is, you know, so just that principle of aviation um, pertaining to our health, if we try to be more proactive or, or in our goal, then is, you know, these action steps, these right habits will really 
we will be grateful that we made these right choices, you know, in our younger years. I agree. I agree totally. And I, I mean, I try to eat the balance diet, as they would call it, but we are going to tell you what is the balance diet. Because sometimes when I'm thinking that, you know, you did well, like, you didn't do so good today. So what really is a balanced diet? And is it, should it be unique to every individual? Yeah, nice question. Uh, what happened is um, a balanced diet is, you know, yes, we need we need the carbohydrates, we need the protein, and we need the fats. But what I'll say about the carbohydrates, definitely we try we should try to aim for non-starchy and and more so in fitting with your topic, um, you know, picos. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you find that women with picos are seven times more susceptible to get diabetes. So for this reason. It's imperative. I said it's imperative for women with PCOS to definitely try to be on the low carb side of things, because um, metabolic syndrome has several risk factors. From, of course, cancer, from heart, di heart disease, um, high blood pressure, just the name of few, right? And of course, I will I will say that um, fitting for a balanced diet, we do not necessarily need. We just want to look at the glycemic index. When it comes mm -hmm. to the carbohydrates, no, so the glycemic index is really like this um, numerical system that was designed from zero to 100. Um, 100 itself being glucose, which is, you know, the pure glucose is, you know, just, just going to pure sugar, right? And then, you know, so we have all these foods in the category. So from 55 come down is considered low. From 55 goes go, go up to about 75 or so is considered, you know, well, more like 65 is like mid-range and then 75 and up is considered high. 65 and up actually is considered high. So what happens, we want to get the foods that will be on the lower um, side of the scale, the low glycemic foods, you know, in, in the majority of our meals. And of course, the protein is something that I will say in terms of a balanced diet, I would say that the protein is a major factor, but for, for women with PCOS, being more specific to your program this evening, the, we, we, the meats, the chicken is very laden with um, antibiotics, hormones, right? And, and here the thing about it, PCOS in and of itself is a hormonal imbalance. That is true. So, right, putting in more hormones is not going to help the situation. So, of course, if you could possibly get common fall as we see you know <laughs> you know instead of the instead of the the hormone laden antibiotic laden chicken um of course the, the, the vegetarian way there's a tofu um, other means of proteins now they are complementary means also that certain things combined for example rice and peas could get get you all the essential amino acids as well you know so these these things are um, it, it, we want to try as much as possible to not do more harm, right? So we want to stay away from the bad stuff that will basically might have caused the PCOS in the first place. And um, then I'll say definitely in terms of a balanced diet, I'll say that the fats, having the good fats, and the fats is a very, very, um, you know, most people will say, no, if you eat fat, you might get fat. That is equivalent to saying, like, eat some blueberries, you'll get blue, you know. Fat is actually one of the things that will help us to feel satiated. And, um, for example, the fats that I generally recommend to most clients is olive oil, extra virgin of olive oil, and coconut oil, cold press. You know, and in terms of the fats also, there's the polyunsaturated fats. So we have the nuts, the seeds. Right, and I always recommend that um, we soak the seeds, we soak, we soak the nuts and the seeds because we want to get rid of what they call phytates, phytic acids, fight against us. It's like anti-nutrients, anti right? And these anti-nutrients um, is, is a way for the seeds and the nuts to protect themselves. Only when they're in an environment where it's moist, then they release those um, fight it, so phytic acids, and then they're ready to sprout or to grow into, into a plant, right? So it's just a protective mechanism of the plant, to, of the seed or the nuts to get itself 
you know, to not spoil. Only, only it will, will only release those acids and those um, um, enzyme inhibitors when in the right environment. Okay. So I need to ask myself before I forget, right? So when you yeah, sure. Peanuts, so you see, my peanuts only you thinking about pumpkin seed and walnuts and almonds. Yeah, the, the pumpkin seeds, the almonds, the walnuts, all of those need to be soaked. Yeah, all of those need to be soaked to get rid of what they call it, the tannins, the phytates, the anti-nutrients, right? Because I mean, these nuts are not, um, these nuts are not cheap. So we wanna ensure that we're getting all our nutrients from them, right? Instead of it's, it's coming in and some people might uh, complain that they get bloating um, because the anti-nutrients is there and it's not, it's because it's not soap, the anti-nutrients is gonna fight against your digestion system. Yeah, you could soak it, you could add it to a sponge. If you're probably not the type of person that likes to eat like wet, um, not so seeds, you probably, if you actually have a, like a little bit to dry it out as much as possible. If you don't have a, like a dehydrator, then I guess you could just probably use like a napkin or something and dry them out and, and mm -hmm. then have them dry. But definitely it's, it's really crucial in terms of bioavailability of the nutrients and of course preventing um bloating and preventing the, the digestive distress. Wow. <laughs> you know? I've never heard that before. Never. <laughs> I have never heard that before. Okay. And you said carbs. So carbs can't be good. You said rice and peas. I thought rice was something that you need to stay away from. And that's the thing. Um well, save for women who have picos, and you know, initially, if you're looking to prime the pump, if you're looking to get yourself, you know, to that place, you know, probably the timeline if you want to have a, your, your child before 35, because you know, after 35, they call it a geriatric pregnancy. So, you want to do something now, yes, I'll say be drastic about it. Um, definitely for the long haul and making this a lifestyle for life. Instead of jasmine rice or parboil rice, you might want to opt for basmati rice. Because what I've learned, even working with ladies and the first lady fit and well also, and you know what, we, we help a lot of ladies and there's about, uh, I, think, I think we have recorded about eight or nine pregnancies now. Mm -hmm. I always tell them, go drastic. And then when it is you achieve the goal, you're not going to turn a carb monster now, you know, you're just, you'll, you'll reintroduce it now and then because we just want to balance things, you know, but at the end of the day, you're still choosing a low glycemic carbs. And I think um, on the glycemic chart, basmati is somewhere around 58, which is quite good for a rice, all right? And and then what I, what I want to say to on that point, Mel, is um, what, what people don't know, if we eat all meals in the right order, in the right order, it could also prevent insulin spikes. So I'll give when you an example. Yeah, when in the right I'll order. give you an example. So you're going to break the code. You know, you're not supposed to be eating a set of rice. You have picos uh, overweight because there are different degrees on, in terms of some women, depending on their genes, their gene type, it will determine how they, the picos is affecting them. But if it's an issue with overweight, then what I'll say, have your steamed veg first, have your fresh salad first. Um, the first phase insulin, you have the, the, the steam the steamed veg first, and then after you have your protein, and you actually leave the carb for last. So just the just the meat is for last, yeah. the protein is usually yeah, so we tell we tell the children that right because we want them we want our children to eat the food. But when we when we when you know, even though whether a person has picos or not. We want to, as we get older, we want to kind of lessen the, the carbs and the starch as much as possible to maintain optimum health. But more so for someone who has picos, and this is scientifically proven, if they were to eat the, the steamed veg, their proteins, and then have the carbs, the phase of insulin spikes wouldn't be as high. Because the fiber, the fiber, 
and the proteins will basically, um, the first phase insulin wouldn't be high. And then when the carbs come in last, it, it basically helps the insulin or the sugar levels to stabilize as compared to actually eating the rice, getting this big spike, and then having your, your salad and, your, your, and then your protein. So even the order of how we eat could make a significant difference in keeping the blood sugar levels low. And an additional hack I could tell you is um, this thing called apple cider vinegar. If you were to have apple cider vinegar 30 minutes before having your meal, so we having that order, your steamed veg or your, your salad and your meat, and then going to the carbs, yes, that order will help to prevent. So if, if your blood sugar would have spiked, let's say, I'll give you like our example with me. I always check my blood sugar. See, my, my baseline blood sugar is about 80. If I go and I eat that order, it might just, it still will stay within 100. But if I were to eat the rice and then the, um, the, 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 the fresh salad or the steamed veg, and then the protein, it might go to like 110. I just show you any significant difference from eating in the right order. But what just, if you were to at least half an hour before, have the apple cider vinegar, a tall glass of apple cider vinegar, half an hour before eating, your first phase blood sugar level is already being lowered already. Yeah. And then when you add that to come and you're eating in that order, you start, you start you pro, you, um, you steam veg or fresh salad, protein, and then your carbs, Oh, your, your blood sugar is not even going to go over 100. And I mean, I actually test this on myself anecdotally. I mean, for everybody, it could be different, yeah. but I have seen significantly, and then the science is there to prove it too, that, you know, the, these, the combination of these habits could help to keep your blood sugar level low. So you know you're going to go out, you know you're going to break the code, you're going out with dinner with your friends, you might forget Jeremy and this whole nutrition thing. At least you could have some little hacks to still maintain a stability in the break code. <laughs> when you said apple cider vinegar, you need a, 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 a teaspoon to a cup of water? Yeah, yeah it could be a teaspoon to a glass of water. Mm -hmm. and, and and basically, um, apple cider vinegar helps to keep insulin, keeps blood sugar levels low. You know, so that um, will dip blood sugar already. And then when you have the meal in that particular order, it's not going to spike the blood sugar. So that's like a little hack that, could be used, utilized by anyone. Well, I'm going to carry apple cider vinegar around now. <laughs> before I go have a dance and go split this. Let me just take this now um, first before I have that um, two scoops of ice cream. That, yeah. Yeah, and you I know. <laughs> I didn't know that either. I mean, so I heard about the apple cider trick, but I don't. I never, I never, ever drank it. I've never drank it. So Serious? Okay. It. I'm actually going to test it now to see what happens. <laughs> what happens. Yeah, yeah you can test it. it. Where's your provision? provision? Right, so provisions, Um, for example, yam. Yam is like about, if I, a boiled yam is like about 40, right? Um, green fig is like titty something, and uh, it's interesting that um, green fig. I recommend some you know clients to have the green fig because I mean in the market you'll get green fig like two dollars a pound, you know. Um, you'll get five pound, or you might get a pound for two dollars or something like that. Really, really reasonable, you know. So if you're on a budget but you still want to make make sure that you lose the weight, you could have the green fig. Um, the, the sweet potato still, it's, it's about 55 on the glycemic index, which is still relatively low. But what happens if we uh, to have too much, there's a component called um, carboloading, right? There's a component called the glycemic load. So if, you, if we were to have too much now, although it's naturally lower, it's complex carbohydrates, it's not going to spike blood sugar as much. But if we have too much, that carbo that um, um, glycemic load is going to cause your blood sugar to still raise high if we have too much in it. So it still comes with a, a little balance yeah. in terms of the portions. But as, at least it's something that you can have because most times when you, most times when people go on diet and stuff, they're unhappy because the food that they're eating <laughs> is not tasting good. And they're like, why? But it's, it's just hard for them to sustain that diet. So at least they, if they know they have options, it's doable. Yeah, and I guess yeah. the gut, the gut microbiome likes likes options. If you try eating the same thing every day, 
you know, after a while, you get bored. And that's why I always try um, to tell persons, you know, try variety, change it up a little bit. You're, you're, fed up of the, um, you're fed up of the green fig, try a little quinoa. Because we only, we, we put these stipulations, we put things in our limitations in our mind, or stereotypes in our mind that a breakfast must be bread. You know, and you know, the stomach is like, hey, are you hungry? Whether you put quinoa and some eggs, where, 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 where you put, I, I will, I will appreciate it. You know, it's not that a neat bread. You know, so it's just a, a stereotype that we have, you know, that. That is so true because I've never, that is really true. Either bread, <laughs> oats, or <laughs> muffins and stuff, quinoa, <laughs> provision and stuff, don't. Yeah, yeah typically for the trainee. Yeah. The trend Begonian person normally, you know, fry big oat, you know. Yeah. And then the oats that most people might have is the normal processed quicker oats that guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna spike blood sugar. All right. So some the people find is, that it the roll yeah. oats is bad. Well, so the roll oats is a little less processed. And I most people I don't even recommend the, the oats and they're like, no, Jeremy, oats is a health food. I do agree with you, but I have a good reason, and that is that that reason is it has something called glyphosate. Now, glyphosate is like a pesticide, and for most persons who, um, especially if they have a sensitive gut, that glyphosate causes bloating. You know, so I always say if you have to use the oats, try to go for the, um, you know, try to go for the organic, right? Because that glyphosate is something, especially with women with PCOS, that is something again that threw off the hormones. Because what is astonishing is that. These, these type of hormones from the pesticides and, and herbicides, they call them xenoestrogens. Now, xeno, xenoestrogens are 20,000 times, 20,000 times stronger than human, human hormones, right? So basically, it, it, it overpowers our system. And this is, this is, I mean, aside from fibroids, PCOS, um, cancer, and, you know, there's there's an estrogen dominance and progesterone, which is a is like the happy hormone. You know that every husband will want his wife to have plenty of that progesterone hormone as a happy hormone. You know, happy wife, happy home. That is in deficiency because there's so much estrogen because of the diet, because of the meals, that the food that we're having, because of the pesticides. The, these things are basically causing a, a this self proliferation action from the estrogen in our bodies, right? Especially the, the females. That, and, and males males suffer from this too because, you know, prostate issues, erectile dysfunction, all of those are ways that the estrogens could affect. And um, I know that, just as on that note with estrogen, soy has gotten a really bad name. And and for good reason, uh, man, man has tampered with the soy. Right. Very, very healthy food, you know. Because the soy in its organic state is actually the human, the human hormones are 20 times more potent than the plant hormones. Because the plant have hormones too. Right? But what happened, what they what it did, they made the, the, the they made the, they got something in the soy called wronged up ready. Same glyphosate, same um, pesticide. So it's wronged up ready. In other words, when the farmer sprays it. All the weeds dying are wrong the soy, but the soy growing strong. It's wronged up ready. So we, we you know, so think about this spraying the soy three or four times. So the soy you now becomes something very, very toxic for the body because it's so saturated with, with glyphosate, that, that toxic um pesticide. So therefore it could cause cancer, it could cause hormonal issues. And I will say, if you're not getting organic soy, it's better that you eat your rice and peas or your provision and peas or something. Because if it's if it's not organic, you're taking a risk because it, the xenoestrogens is is going to be uh, much higher than the human hormones. And you're thinking you're eating a health food, and it's more detrimental to your health and your body. So what I mean about diet is the hardest thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's. It's it's hard, and um, I mean, I try to educate persons on the principles because, you see, if we understand the principles and the precepts, you find that it's easier. You know, not, there's a script here in proverbs that say, "Knowledge is easy to them that, that to him who understands." 
And when you understand, you know, how the body works, how you understand how the nutrition affects you, your body, it's easier to make the right choices. You know, sometimes, you know, some of us might have the understanding and still do the wrong thing. But at least if we try to do the right things, at least 80% of the time, you're still in a good place. The 80-20 rule applies not just to finances. You could use it with your health. <laughs> so true. Let's talk about calorie content for a moment. I know everybody is really obsessed with counting calories. Like, yes, 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 yes. And I, I, yes. I was at a point in time now I'm like, hmm. I still do for snacks though, from time to time. And like, <laughs> when I started to look at, I remember looking at a pack of peanuts on the group, not peanuts, almonds. I'm like, how much calories? <laughs> and the, the small pack of almonds was two servings. And I was like, whoosh. <laughs> what is this? Should we, be, should we be counting calories or just go take it on and eat in moderation? Yeah. You see, um, the counting calories, I remember when I was in university, uh, there's a Jamaican lady, nutritionist. Oh, forgive me, I can't remember her name right now, but she wrote a book called The Calorie Counter with most of the Caribbean foods, even from doubles and breadfruit. And, I mean, I'll tell you, it, most of the Caribbean foods that actually have the calorie count, so it was very interesting. But it's it's painstaking. It's painstaking. I know some people might be, you know, they have the, they are the personality types that will do good with it. You know, so you have to, you know, then there's the personality types that are just going to like, hey, I fed up with this counting calorie. You know, so for a while, say, is, um, it depends on you. Um, however, if you, if you understand the principles of eating right, right, for your body type, for your unique system, for your, especially if you have a, a syndrome like PCOS, then you could eat until you're full. You know, because most people who tend to eat in this eating out eat until at least eighty percent as they say. You know, you feel you want to feel satiated. Anytime you start to go down to the calorie counting and you're feeling like there's you're starving yourself, as they say, it's better you're gonna pick up two sizes up one time because <laughs> it's just a, it's just a matter of time that you know you quit and you get bigger than it was before. And and this is why eating to feel satiated and eating the right foods and you know that that guy that the guiding principles of you know low carbs good protein and good quality fats is really essential you know in terms of making you feel satiated and helping you to you know win the battle without having to go through all the counting and you see what, the more complicated it is the faster people can give up you know yes. <laughs> it's hard it's hard that that you see most Difficult thing. Another thing is protein. It's like, what is enough protein? How do you know how much protein you're eating? So you go on a diet and you cut out everything, and then you're losing weight, and then you realize that, okay, I'm protein deficient. Right. Yeah. So, how are you treating that now? Well, in terms of protein, I'll say that protein is one of the most essential um, things to the body. You now, Taking it down to a really granular level now, each cell, you know, trillions of cells in the body, 50% is protein and 50% is fats, right? No. Right. So down to the cellular level is how important protein is. Now, for a person who wants to, for, for someone who wants to gain weight or they want to at least maintain their weight, having protein sufficient for your body type and your activity levels is so important. How you do it, I will say a uh, 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 MacGyver ruler term is like it, using your palms, using the palm of your hands with every meal. In other, in other words, it's like you're shaking hands with protein. So the surface of your hands, whether it's a, um, a chicken breast or a piece of fish, you try to use your palm as your guide. And whether you're five foot 10 or six foot 10, that will be the protein that will be sufficient for you. So that is just like not getting too scientific, not multiplying all the, you know, your activity level by your, your, um by two point two to get your grams of protein for your body for pong body weight. I know if you don't want to get that scientific, it just simply as just using your palm with every meal, even if it is um your vegetarian, you know, a palm full of nuts and your seeds will be sufficient, right? But what I want to say is, for people who want gains, let me be real there's a key component called amino acid, which is really, really important for growth, called leucine. 
leucine is what you get from more animal based I mean, um, proteins, right? And that is like, um, it's really, really good for growth. But the vegetarian is um, proteins are not as potent and leucine as the animal. So there's just the, the side effect or the, the downside of the of it. person who is a vegan as compared to yeah. a person who is, you know, an, exactly. a meat eater. <laughs> What are the options? What are the options? Yeah. Um, I think we have to answer so many things in the conversation. We started already in terms of how important is um those green vegetables, the cauliflower and the oh. um broccoli and cabbage and oh. I found Swiss chard in the market the other day. It <laughs> all right. I ate it, but into. Let's put it that way. It's an acquired taste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, well, the greens are so important, Melissa. Um, you know, what I'll say is um, for some people who, who might have like thyroid issues, there's a particular compound, right, in, in, the, in the greens called gryogen. For example, the, the cabbage or the, um, the broccoli. This gryogen now is basically, it inhibits iodine absorption in the body. So I will say that, you know, people who have thyroid issues, they might have to make sure that they really, um, you know, probably limit as much as possible the cruciferous vegetables. But people who, you know, eat, don't have any issues with their thyroid, um, is very, very important. And more so for picos in keeping with your topic this evening. There's a component in the, in the, in the broccoli, the, the um, cruciferous vegetables called indole cannibal tree. Now, indole cannabal tree is a compound that helps the body to get rid of excess estrogen, which is one of the things that affects most women with picos. Yes. So, you know, of course, you want to make that, I'll say, as regular as possible. You want to have that in your system, that indole cannabal tree. And, and then, of course, you could also do what you call a, um, make a probiotic with cabbage, for example. Um, you know, they call it sauerkraut. That is like fermenting the cabbage. I think there are a lot of YouTube videos that you could get to see, you know, how to do your sauerkraut. Um, and so, so sauerkraut now, it becomes three things. It becomes a cruciferous vegetable. It becomes a probiotic and a prebiotic in one. You know, and you could just, it's easy to conveniently have a little bit with every meal. So you're having this tree in one day, you're having your cruciferous vegetable, you're having your your, your, um, your probiotic and your prebiotic. So the gut is getting good bacteria as well. And, you know, of course, the, the, you, will, you will have an easy time in the washroom, which we all want. <laughs> yes, yes. I didn't realize the importance of sauerkraut. I actually saw it in the supermarket a couple of times. And oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you could make your own, it's always better because you find that sometimes the supermarkets and so on, you could have the little additives that may offset the, the good stuff. Especially the good probiotics. You see. So yeah. So and and, and the cruciferous vegetables, Melissa, is, is very full in. You know, um, I will have like just today. I had some um, broccoli and some cauliflower. Some um, but not the not the local celery, the foreign celery because the local celery is so potent. I, I have that in a steam belly. Um, mm -hmm. it had um inside of there had some some pumpkin and um. You know, okra. You know, so this was just steamed. Uh, I had some some fish in there, and then you know, it, it, it was just it's just a simple meal. But you'll be surprised. You know, even as me as a uh, as a man, I, I will feel quite full with that. I might add some legumes to it now and then. But I'll feel quite full, and 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 satisfied. And at the same time, my blood sugar level will hardly budge. You know, from mm -hmm. that and yeah. So I would say the greens is essential. <laughs> but does it matter if it's frozen or if it's fresh? Because the things you call, I'm a frozen queen. If any of my friends are on this chat, they're like, I freeze everything. Like, it is <laughs> freeze, chop, freeze. So it yeah, that's okay. if it's frozen or fresh? No, no, actually the frozen, it actually retains the nutrients and so on. So it's okay. It's okay. I think the problem is like, you know, boiling it and throwing all the water and then eating it. Um, that is where you're getting rid of the nutrients, but frozen is okay, and um, you know it's something that you could you could do, especially if you're a person on the go 
and you know preparation is key 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 yes. king key when it comes to living this lifestyle it um, is you know. be eating a lot of kfc <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. The hormones wouldn't like that. No, when hunger takes you, so it's like I'm hungry, and you buy the first thing that you see, which is usually yes, not. yes, it's yes, good. yes, yes, and not the best. Not thing. And that is where, or and that's why sometimes just walking with a handful of those soup nuts to give you could save you, could save you I'm a lot. Why am I doing that soup nuts? I'm going to try and soak it and dry to see if it'll come back as natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, not getting all the nutrients. It's actually putting in anti nutrients. So it's one if it's one important thing that you could change or habit that you could implement. ASAP is yeah, it's just definitely yeah, super. Flaxseed too? Um, no, no, flaxseed, flaxseed, what you want to do, flaxseed don't necessarily have to soak, but what you want to do with flaxseed, get a coffee grinder and you want to crack that shell right and have that add that to your, your smoothies or so on because what happens the the ligners and all the good nutrients are inside that but the well, if you go to the supermarket and you already see it grind don't pick that up please um omega-3 in the plant-based form omega-3 is very fragile Mel. so you find that um because it's so fragile if you grind that and you put that on you leave that out for a day the nutrients will, you know, be evaporated. It wouldn't, you hardly get anything. So think about that in the grocery shelf, how much value you really gain. So it's better to invest in a coffee grinder probably for $110, $120, depending on where you're buying it. You have your, your flaxseed, you're going to, you're on the go, you grind up the flaxseed, it grinds really, really nice in a coffee grinder and you add it to your smoothie, you add it to your oats, you know, whatever you're, you're, you're having on the go. And you'll get your, actually, you'll get the ELA, the, the ELA form, alpha linoleic acid, which is the omega-3 or plant-based form of omega-3, um, you know, which is really good for the joints. Omega-3 is good for the cells, good for good nutrients for the brain. And also, it actually stimulates that, um, you know, it actually stimulates a pathway in the liver called um, hydroxy-2, which helps to get rid of estrogen, excess estrogen also. So the plants, as I tell you, the plants... You know, there's a proverb in Psalms, Psalms 114, Psalms 104 verse 14 that said, God has made herbs for the service of men. And clearly you see that with the herbs, they serve us. They don't, you know, whereas a pharmaceutical drug, it has a job to do, whether you have enough, whether you don't have enough, it has a job to do, and it's going to do its job. If your blood is already thin and you take a aspirin, it's going to make the blood thinner. It is not like that with most herbs. That is really true, but so many things I recognize that I'm doing wrong, not soaking my seeds. <laughs> flax seeds, yeah. thinking, I'm, thinking I'm eating the flax seed or putting it in a smoothie, but because I'm not grinding it, I'm not getting any nutrients. Yeah, 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 it will just pass through your system. Wasting my money, just wasting my money. <laughs> what is the point? What is this? <sighs> so much things I well, need So many simple things, drinking apple cider vinegar before eating ice cream. <laughs> Don't break the code too much, eh? <laughs> I'm not, I, uh, I have a little bit of discipline in me, but it's just good okay, to okay. know you have when How to break, yeah, if you have to break the code. And then some people may actually be sensitive to apple cider vinegar. So I'll say for those people, um, you know, still use it in moderation. You could also consider having, you know, a couple of pieces of karate or, or, or doing a 10, 10 um, 40 air squats before um, having a meal. So that will actually create insulin sensitivity. So it wouldn't spike blood sugar also. So there's a couple of hacks that you could do, you know, if you're going to break the code or, you know, you're going to do something. Yeah, you know, but of course, you might have to go to the washroom. You might have to go to the washroom and be like, air yeah, squats time, you know, because you can't do it. It's inappropriate to do it in public. You know? <laughs> What can we eat to keep our hormones in check? Like it says the mm. testosterone that's one of the um, hormones that we have too much of that actually causes all of us to be imbalanced, the androgens and stuff. Is there any particular right. food that we can consume to bring that down? All right, so um, 
strangely, and this kind of ties into your earlier question in terms of the greens, because the greens is actually that food. Um, the androgens is predominantly a male hormone, and the androgens is what the excess androgens is what kind of causes the different issues from um, obesity, oily skin, here, here on the face. Because different women will get probably all, the, all these um, side effects, weight gain, um, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, diabetes, and the list goes on and on. But what is the most significant things with women who have PCOS is they have to watch that diabetes because diabetes is something that affects almost every cell in the body in a negative way. And and even if you're um, even if genetically you might never get diabetes, a person may never get diabetes. But even if they get metabolic syndrome and that insulin is circulating in the body in high levels, cancer, heart disease, you know the major four. Alzheimer's, dementia, it, these things, all of these are pegged upon sugar and metabolic syndrome. Um, so in terms of, in terms of um, you know, really, you know, really making any changes and allowing your body to, you know, be, be insulin sensitive more than insulin resistant, you know, it's really, really important. Yeah. Really important. I have a, um, a question here um, that I, I have specifically because I want you to tell the individual because I've been telling them this for so long that they should stop drinking coke. So I need a nutritionist to tell them to stop drinking <laughs> coke. All right. Well, yeah, I could come to the coke. I just want to add in one more thing is um, there, there's, there's two pathways, right? Really mm -hmm. zone in on your question specifically. That last question specifically, there's these two pathways in the liver, hydroxy, hydroxy 2, hydroxy 16. If we don't have the right foods, like those foods that has the indole cannabis tree, those cruciferous vegetables, then they could, the, food, the estrogen or the, basically could go down the wrong pathway, which is the hydroxy 16. Now, if it goes down the hydroxy 16, it makes your system even worse. Wow. So therefore, the hydroxy two, you want to stay on highway two, and um, the, the cruciferous vegetables help that. Um, fish, high omega trees help that. Um, in terms of sugary drinks, getting to your coke now, definitely you want to stay away from these things. I had clients who um, were really, really addicted to the coke. It's an addictive thing. And even before, before um, they, I think they ruled out they actually had cocaine in the coke back then, way in the old days. Yeah. But now there's something that they put in that is also equally, well, not probably as, as addictive, but it is addictive, called caffeine, right? So that caffeine, some people have to get that caffeine, and that is a vicious cycle by itself, right? So I'll say, what is more dangerous to, aside from the, the 10, I think one could probably equivalent to probably 10 spoons of sugar. So what is more crucial and I think they use the coke to clean the machines in the factory, but that next yes. topic by itself. What is more crucial, Mel, is there's something called phosphoric acid. So it's very acidic, very, very acidic. I think on the acidic scale, it's about 2.5, right? So 2.5 is very acidic. So I have most clients who, you know, they have suffered with joint pains. If I um, just run them through some little question, eh? And they have cokes and they stop the coke, the joint pains leave. You know, one lady I remember she you know her fifties, she was actually telling me she could actually bend on again. She told she could she couldn't even bend without getting pain. And that's coming off of that coke. She was just showing like you know her, her bone started to feel strong again. Wow. Right, and down down to the a granular level, if the body has so much acid, guess what? It has to pull calcium from the bones to neutralize that phosphoric acid and of course if it pulls calcium from the bones which is the master mineral is going to cause aside from brittle bones so some people might have their bones breaking very easily it could also cause joint pains too so it's really not a good thing to have in, huh yeah i said explain your explanation yeah, yeah quite a lot with regards to yeah. many people who I know who drink a lot of coke. They complain about yes. all those problems you just mentioned there. So 
<laughs> yeah, and then think about this now, adding injury to insult. Some of them might have it with a meal. So the carbonation is also affecting or inhibiting their digestive processes. So their body is not able to digest the food properly. You know, so that's that. So they're not even getting any nutrients. So there's so much ways that it's it's not something that is, you know, something to, to have. I mean, I would say at all, but you know. It's like, you know, these cigarette advertisements where they say, um, smoking is not healthy for you, blah, 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 blah. You should create one for Coke. Coke <laughs> yeah. Coke. Wow. Coke is really acidic. And um, uh, yeah. most people should know that they, yeah, they should consider, you know, changing you know, all that, 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 that substance from their lifestyle if they want to be healthy Definitely. or remain healthy. Most definitely. So, Jeremy, we had a point in the conversation where you open up the floor for questions. And um, so, guys, if anyone's listening and you have any questions, be sure to um, send it in the comments and we will try our best to answer it. Outside of that, I did ask persons to pre register and the purpose for okay. that was a lot of to put forward their questions if they had any, because some of them, um, sometimes people are very shy to ask their questions in a public forum okay so when they um register they will put forward their question and i will ask it for them anonymously sure so i'm just going to um send out the questions and some of these questions will put forward to um jessica and also to dr joseph because it's kind of like two phone or three phone in some cases so the first one is what additional mm -hmm. supplements let me just put it there what additional supplements should someone with people's PCOS take to battle fatigue? Um, and I know supplements is a big thing with regards to vitamins, additional yes. minerals. So, yeah, definitely. Um, well, as though this person is actually asking a specific thing to fatigue, and I would definitely say of the battles, uh, you'll have they'll have to have B complex. B complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B complex is a must when you're talking fatigue, you know. And of course, you know, trying not to have because what just if you already have high levels of insulin, which is the fat storing hormone, insulin circulating into the body. What happens with most women? They tend to have this low blood sugar, and not necessarily because they, um, you know, they didn't eat or anything, but because of how they're eating, they're having this major spike of insulin and because of the androgen and the, 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 um, the picos creating this high level of insulin floating in the body right and this high level of insulin causes the blood sugar to drop really low so some people will actually experience that fatigue you know feeling tired that's that slump um itis yeah. Kind of thing. yeah sluggish lethargic you know just because they're how they're eating so what i'll say also you know aside from the wonder in the bottle it's not always the one any but sometimes it's just the lifestyle and if it is you're having high simple carbohydrates we have refined carbohydrates and you're getting these big highs and lows those lows those valleys there is what causes fatigue for most people and you know you know you know i mean most people have that that big um, pie and rice for lunch and after lunch you know it's like yeah what foods are rich in the complex all right, so the foods from a natural perspective, you could get nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a natural-based supplement. Um, it's not like a supplement. It's like a food. Nutritional yeast came from yeast. Um, and then there is brewer's yeast, the next form of yeast also. There's, um, there's even, even, um, even there is the, the honey, right? There's the honey, um, the bee pollen is also... Right. High in vitamins. So those are like some of the natural things. If someone, you know, because one thing we could say, natural, unless you have any sensitivity, which I haven't even talked about as yet. Once a person doesn't have sensitivities to these foods, then it's okay for them to have them. But they should always look out for sensitivities because for some people, they could be sensitive to the yeast, which will cause their pulse to raise, cause um, you know, little hidden intolerances. Um, it could be it could be tiredness or fatigue dark circles under their eyes, you know, all these different things could come about from food allergy. So I'll always say, you know, a quick test to do. You're having something for the first time, you see a, a, a pulse, they call it the pulse test. Right. So 
this is kind of like a little MacGyver tool too. They call it the pulses. I, I mean, MacGyver is I'm talking about a certain generation, but it was this guy who will just use anything around him to, you know, make things happen. Um, he was really utilize what he had around him. So this this pulse test is, you see a baseline pulse. If your baseline pulse is 70, you're sitting down, so you're sitting down, you have that, that suspected food. Now, if you see that within 10 minutes, you check 10 minutes. Now, it's always better to do this with a, probably a smartwatch than check any pulse. Eh? That's the only thing. Yeah. With a smartwatch, it will be very easy to do. Um, after 10 minutes, if you see that your pulse is from 70-something to 80-something, if it raised by 10, it's a sign of a sensitivity or intolerance. It's different from an allergy. Allergy is things that we need the peritone for. You know, that's something right. coming out of the skin, um, um, constriction or spasms, you know, immediately, you know, rash immediately, but a sensitivity is a little more hidden something. So with these foods, I'll say it's it's good to have the natural things if, you, if it's working. But if it's not working for you, of course, try probably the synthetic. Wow. Good information, Jeremy. Good information. The other one, I think you mentioned it before, and that's the one I think it's relevant for it relates to the scripture you quoted with regards to, you know, the Lord created yeah. a silver servant. So, the silver servant. Which is to cope with PCOS. Well, let's take a approach to cope with the medication, metformin. No, uh, so metformin, um, for some people, and this has been um, anecdotally, and this has been proven, that some people are just dealing with the problem with metformin first. For mm-hmm. some people, it actually causes kidney damage. You know, so long term, the kidneys could be damaged. And of course, that is a significant long term side effect. Right? Um, I would say it's always good to, if, if your blood sugar is off the charts, yes, it's always good to take your medication and try to stabilize but try you try working on the side to make lifestyle changes you make the nutritional changes see how you're dealing with your stress try some rituals in the night or in the evening give yourself that me time to relax the stress um you know make a lifestyle change start the exercising do all the good things while says um you know because these these drugs has long-term side effects um that could be detrimental uh, while I say in terms of a natural thing for the issue with insulin, um, hyperinsulinemia that happens with most people with PCOS, there's something, a herb called berberine. Right. Berberine. There's, there's chromium. Now, berberine also, berberine is, it, it will actually lower the blood sugar and also it helps the detoxification pathways in the body. So, there are the people, let me just put it like this, there are some people based on their genes they do all the bad things, and you know we will say, wait, wait, they live long, doing all the bad things. Well, most of us might be able to do that, but what they're realizing that there's a there's a gene type called Foxo3. Now, Foxo3 is a gene type that their their bodies are very very good at detoxifying things. If they have high levels of Foxo3, their bodies are very very good at detoxifying even medication. Even if they're on medication, they'll, they'll detoxify it really good as compared to somebody else, right? So um, if, it is, if it is a person is um, on that particular medication, they might be okay if they have high levels of FOXO3. But for a person who don't have those high levels of genetic FOXO3, then berberine actually helps that detoxification pathway, which you call like a longevity pathway. Right, berberine does that, so it's 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 really really a really good thing, a good replacement to metformin, and of course the side effects compared to metformin is, and then I'll say, um, chromium, chromium piconolate, chromium piconolate. It's a it's a it's a more of a mineral, but okay. really really good for um, and then there's the gy- for in terms of the the herbal aspect, there's something called gynema. Gynema, which is also good for blood sugar. And there, there's a next natural herb called longevity spinach. Longevity spinach, or you call it, the scientific name is Gynurus procumbens. 
And a quick story on that is um, I remember getting that um, I was at a plant place and having a discussion with a guy. Apparently, he used to drink a lot of soft drink. And he was young, a young guy, and he, he was pre diabetic. And he said, you know, this particular herb, I was just asking about the herb, generous performance. I was like, what's that? And he shared his story, and you know, he said he was pre diabetic, and he, he, he started taking a leaf of this herb every day. Um, he stopped drinking his soft drink. He went back to his doctor about three months after. So from being pre-diabetic on the border of being full full blown diabetes, he was able actually to reverse it back to normal blood sugar just from using the herb. And that is something that ha we have locally. I was about to ask you in terms of all these fancy herbs you're calling. This is yes. Right? Or this no, no, that one. Yeah, we have the generous recommers is something you can get locally. Um, I actually bought it from a plant place, and then I I have my own um. Propagation. So you, actually, you, actually, you actually have your plant. Yeah, it's a real easy plant to propagate to, and um, you know, you could actually you know just take a, take a piece and it could grow into a, um, it propagates into a piece of soil real easy. But of course, and it's good. You drink it. For you low end, you could eat it like a salad. You could eat it like a salad. You know, and um, you know, so those are like natural things that you could use and incorporate incorporating everything holistically to bring keep the blood sugar levels low and um you know you really want to as much as possible go natural if you could because you find that the who wants the side effects in the long term you know who really wants those side effects you know we want to be here to see our children's children we want to be a blessing and not a burden exactly you know, so that's the biggest part of it though the burden Being a yeah burden. You know, who, who wants to be a burden some people give up because they feel like they are burden to their loved ones and they give up. You know, and I'm just saying that if we would try to be going back to aviation, if we try to be proactive, if we try to, you know, go for the medical checkups, eat right according to your metabolic system, if we try to do the right things to be proactive, yes, life could show a curveball, but it doesn't mean that, I mean, we, we wouldn't try to do the right things because um, from a from a there's something called blue zones right. and it's established that communities that eat foods in their natural state um i think there's sardinia in Ita italy um the sda community in um loma linda and the um the, the um okinawa japan people which okinawa is a place and these people live in into the 90s hundreds strong so what they sum it up, they call them blue zones. What they sum it up to, to be three things. They sum it up to be one, they have community. So this thing is not more than nutrition, it's love. You know, we're looking out for each other, forgiving, you know, fellowshipping, having, not being lonely. Loneliness apparently is something that could lead to early death. You know, so it seemed like we were really meant to be connected, as they say, long time. It takes a village to bring up a child. And then in terms of movement, you know, people in Sardinia, they, in the 90s, they're going up mountains to get their goats. So they're always moving, right? They're always moving. If, if anybody go Loma Linda, uh, we actually had a client um, from First Lady for example, she studied in Loma Linda, right? And her name is Melinda. Actually, it was like, you know, really funny. And she, she said that these people in Loma Linda, they walk it. They in the 70s, 80s. She said they on the road, they 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 on the move, exercising, moving right through biking, everything. They always moving, right? So the community eating food in its natural state, right, and staying active. Those three things, and those places are classified as blue zones, right? Statistically proven to live longer than probably most cultures. Right, I can imagine. Yeah. The other question is, can PCOS be really reversed with proper diet and nutrition? I think the, yeah, I believe that it could be reversed. And, and the PCOS, here, here the name of it, polycystic ovarian syndrome is a syndrome. So if you start doing the right things, and you get rid of the hyperinsulinomania, which I really believe is the root cause, the real significant problem when it comes to PCOS is this thing called hyperinsulinomania. This hyper amount of insulin. Insulin is a good thing, you know, 
but the high power amount of insulin in blood causes problems. It comes like cortisol, which is like the stress, yeah. stress hormone. Which cortisol releases stress, you know, and, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, wears out the adrenal system. You know, so too much of any good thing is not good for nothing. Agreed. So. Uh, this question, I don't have, I don't have a bowel movement every day. What should I and should not eat? All right, so a person who don't have a bowel movement, there's a couple of key factors uh, in terms of, so it could be simple as hydration. Are they drinking enough water? You know, most people forget to drink water because they might be working in the air condition. I know movement, movement, exercise. Sometimes, you know, people sitting by their desk whole day, um, you know, hardly moving. They might get up to go to the washroom. But movement, you know, even if every half an hour you were to just take a walk or stand up or do something, you know, um, movement is something that creates that stimulation. And then, of course, which is the senequinone essential fiber, right? Yeah. Now, if you if you if you're not having bowel movements, then you don't want to go all fiber and you know try going all gung ho, and you want to have all the fiber all of a sudden. It could actually cause the same constipation effects. So you just want to gradually. It could be simple as the same flax seeds. Just add in some flax seeds, add in some chia seeds. To, to your meals, you know, you grind up the flax seed and you just add some of that onto your, onto your meals, just sprinkle it on your meals, so that additional natural fiber. Before you know, go to the metamucil and all of those things, it always try better to try the natural things. So I'll say hydration, I'll say fiber, I'll say movement. And if you have to get a little help, there's detoxification also. And and one, one simple and powerful backyard herb that really, really good for the intestinal tract is the aloe vera. As in, as in, Aloes. I know. Yeah, it no, the taste, the taste is not so yeah, you know. <laughs> but it's gonna help um that area tremendously. <laughs> but of course you want to drain all the yellow part first. And then um what you could do when you drain all the yellow and the yellows. You want to slice it up. You could slice it up in a jug of water. Slice up a nice piece in a jug of water and leave it to sit for at least six hours. And then you, you, you drink on that. And that helps. The, that helps in the process of detoxification also. If you're really, if it's if not so palatable, you could add a little bit of lime to it. You know, to show off the the taste. That's it's a quiet. It's a quiet taste, nice. Melissa. Well, you know. Yeah. The lime is a detoxification process too. <laughs> yeah. Diet helps with, with peace infection. I know you were speaking about natural foods earlier, but could diet help with right. infection? Yeah, definitely. Someone who has yeast infection, they want to stay away from certain things. Now, even peanuts, they want to stay away from mushrooms. They want to stay away from things that could actually create more fungus in the system, right? So if you're, if it, no, there's yeast infection um, from there's urinary tract infection, there's candida overgrowth, candida parasite is something that could, you know, those things, if they multiply anybody enough, they ex they're actually excreting a person's blood, making their blood more toxic. Yeah. So diet definitely could help. Um, of course, one of the main things that the yeast, feed on is sugar that so yeah so if they want if you really want to reset the system is staying off of sugar eating clean limiting refined carbohydrates right and then of course to give the, the yeast on them a little a little um things like um the black walnut right as a herb and one thing they hate also is um the grape seed extract Add a little bit of drops of that to your water and you have the great seed extract. It will help to basically kill off some of And if it's really, really bad, you could actually take some um, herbs, candida um, capsules already formulated and have have um, basically have that as a, you know, a supplement to aid any fiber. Of course, you want to be adding that uh, protocol of, you know, staying off of the sugar, watching the sweets, um, eating clean, 
and with the supplements and so on. You know, it's just, it's not like a uh, one any bottle. It will, it will work better if you encapsulate with it all the other good habits. I hear that. But yes, definitely, definitely it could, it could be, it could, it could be a help. And, and it's very, you know, it's very, it's very easy to reverse it. But of course it requires discipline. Jeremy, it has been such a pleasure having a conversation with you. I have learned so much today, things that I had no idea. And I realized I'm spending money partly. <laughs> but um tell us more about in terms of if somebody's trying to reach out to you or access your service and stuff um because i am sure they hear that you have a lot of information and this is just you speaking in an open forum when it is they actually have to come on a one-on-one -on -one, it will be very valuable to them so how can they get in touch with you how can um how can they how is your session? Is it virtual? Is it? Tell us about. Tell us everything. <laughs> right. So, I mean, we are, in 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 the eyes of God, we are all equal. But when it comes to our bodies, Mel, we are different. We are created differently. I've learned that some people will have just as our fingerprints are different. In you know, we all different in terms of our dietary structure. Some foods will work with some. Some foods will work with others. You know, some people better with vegetarian, some people better with a mix. So it all like, you know, it takes an investigational process. So it, it, I put on the detective hat sometimes and help people to kind of, you know, go through their, their, their issues to try to keep and try to turn every stone possible to get to the root cause. Because if we don't get to the root cause, then you just have to take the medication. So it's, it's a consultation process. I do it virtually for now. Um, soon to open a physical office because, um, you know, COVID done. So I can't use the virtual as an excuse for too long. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, at a place where they could come consult and get some supplements and things to help them on their journey, because, you know, I really believe with all my heart and, you know, God wants us well. God wants us well. We, you know, nutrition is a part of the pie. There's this, this big pie and nutrition is, a small part of that pie, but you know, loving each other, um, watching our thoughts, community, um, you know, feet, you know, all of these things combined, you know, sowing good things. If it, if it's so good, you'll reap good, you know. So it's all it's all this holistic approach to, to, to life because um, some people issues are not even pegged upon nutrition. It could be unforgiveness. It could be bitterness that could bring that this this the stress or the disease in their body. So it's just that consultation and then formulating now a meal plan specific for that individual. And and then basically, you know, we do follow-ups and we see how things go in because it all takes implementation by making the right habits day by day. You know, and if we were to do that, if we were to have that, you know, that that, that mindset that, you know, improving Again, better and better every day in every way. I try to remember who, who said that poem, but I can't remember right now. You know, every day in every way, we're trying to get better. So I'm just like a coach to, you know, help people. Because sometimes because of my feeling nutrition and fitness and all of that, I'm able to kind of tap into that wisdom to help someone. So sometimes it's more the wisdom that they might pay for because... Um, you know, anybody could go on YouTube and get some information, but the wisdom is the ability to take the information and make it useful for you. And that is what I do, essentially. I like that. How can they contact you? I have here um, your information. Um, so I don't know. So your phone, 330-9580. Yes. And yes. your Gmail, Yatab Holistic Health. Yatab Holistic Health. At gmail.com, yes. In terms of what Yatab means, because I thought it was very interesting when I read it. Oh, yeah, Yatab, Yatab is the um, Hebrew word for well. You know, it means to make song, to make beautiful, to make amends, to find, be sweet. You know, it's it's a word that repre really represents wellness from a holistic point of view. And and I came from, you know, well, people, um, the Hebrew language is considered the Lord's language. You know, so that wellness, it signifies, um, you know, God wants us well. And I think it's, it's, it's still John that says, you know, God, he wish above all that we prosper and be in health, 
even as our soul prosper. So my journey is just, um, you know, in this wellness field is just helping people to, you know, just tap into that that wellness that God really wants us to. Because sometimes, as even as the word says, that the people perish for the lack of knowledge. You know, so it's just kind of like puts in that aspect of Yatab, you know, and um, using that Yatab concept to look into some matters to help them, you know, in, the, in their journey to get to get wet, to get to that hundred percent, you know, to feel good because it feels so good to feel good, you know. And we ain't even talk, we ain't even talk about sleep yet, you know. We ain't talk about it's so much, it's so much, but time. <laughs> once once you have me, you can come back anytime because. I really think, and this is outside of the PCOS um, yeah. conversation or topic, a lot of people need hand-holding and guidance and stuff, and sometimes... Yeah, I know the nutrition could be amazing. The nutrition could be a real amazing. It's thousands of hours. You mentioned something there that is really, really, we take for granted in terms of it may not be nutrition, it may be forgiveness, something, you know, so that's... Something like, deeper. Yeah, yeah sometimes it could be it's used as trauma. Trauma could be the reason why somebody's not well. So you might probably need somebody who's a psychologist to help you to dig deeper because it may not be pegged upon the issue of um nutrition alone. You know, so it's 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 this pie that we all try to have to balance as much as possible to really live that successful life, you know, not being you know tunnel vision into one thing. But seeking that balance, it come like you, you can't go on exercise and you just go and do biceps alone, you know. And you are, you look like Popeye, right? We, <laughs> yeah. Some days you might do legs, some days you do triceps, you know. You balance it. Some days you are going to do some cardio, and so too is you know the the resuscitation of life. You know, we try to be balanced, um, and and allow that balance from spirit, soul, and body, a holistic balance that we can you know live fulfilling lives. And I just want to say, I just want to say, Mel, I know we're coming in for landing. Um, in terms of, in terms of um, picos, you know, you see this thing called the pill, and I, I've, I, I could, I could bang, I could bang my desk here like them politician, and that pill is something else. That pill is something that could not just affect you; it could also affect a generation. You know, so consider other methods. There's the IUD. There's other methods for you know um, that. And then, of course, for some people with PCOS, the, the doctors give them the pill because they're not having they're not having yeah. regular and all of that regular menstrual cycle. But what's this? If they were to have a child after and their hormones are all messed up, right? Their messed up hormones could also affect the child. So sometimes. Women who have PCOS could actually have it because their mother could have been on the pill. People could be homosexual or having homosexual tendencies because their mother was on the pill. You know, so it's 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 just it's just so much um, that could be affected by that pill. You know, and, and you know, try as much as possible the natural things because it could affect the generation. When a male is born, when a male is conceived. There's something called an androgen wash that happens in the womb, all right? If there, if a woman's hormonal system is on outer balance and he doesn't get that androgen wash, then he could think he's a she. And I'm not putting aside the fact that some people could actually have the perverse issues by saying, I'm just putting out there's a possibility that due to the, you know, once we mess with nature, nature could mess with us. And due to that, hormonal imbalance due to the due to these um these pills it could actually cause picos and fibros and even cancer in the generations to come you know so i would say yes the pill the hrt the hormone replacement therapy what's the meat on it products you know um, for picos because the meat and its product, the meat of course has the hormones as we were talking about. And then I want to say this to try uh -huh. to try to, especially the ladies, try to have um, in terms of your undies, try to have a hundred percent cotton. Because in these in these um in these um underwears that are made with polyester, hundred um, much polyester and acrylic and and um, nylon, these are plastics. 
and plastics as xenoestrogen when they sweat that could actually be absorbed into this into the integument system the skin and also cause hormonal imbalance so look at the look at the um look at the plastic bottles look at try replacing it with glass you know is is as as i say is trying to unturn every stone as much as possible to fight against these hormonal imbalances Definitely is. I have one question. I know we, as you said, landing. Yeah, yeah community landing. <laughs> community landing. <laughs> is turkey any better than chicken? Hope for good protein? Um, hmm. You see, where we get it, most, most of the protein, most of the turkey might actually have nitrates. You know, nitrates is, uh, um, is like a preservative. But what means, what means, I mean, so you have your turkey for Christmas, you have other nitrates in your system, okay. But I'll tell you the danger about the nitrates and the processed meats. The nitrates, when it's mixed with acid in the digestive system, it turns into something called nitrosamine. What is nitrosamine? Nitrosamine is something that is very cancerous. And it could actually lead to stomach cancers and so on. So I would say, if you're having your turkey, try again the fresh ones. It may be a lesser evil. <laughs> you want me to go and wait? wait, wait. Yeah, 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 you know, but it, 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 uh, it, it, um, I will say because of that, if it, if it has the nitrates, I will say chicken would be better. But got nitrates, that nitrosamine is, is terrible. I think even the, the World Health Organization established that nitrates is cancerous. And, um, that, that, um, it, by about 50% chance again cancer. So people who eat in sausage every day is not wise. Okay. <laughs> okay. God is I'm good. God is good. That is okay. That is okay. Yeah. Things happen. Um, but yes. It was so interesting having a conversation with you. I've learned a lot and I will definitely be in touch. I'm going to get my coffee grinder this weekend. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and with also with um trying to soak my seeds, I need to do some experimenting. So yes, 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 yes. Most definitely, guys. I hope you learn a lot from Jeremy and his information is still running along the bottom on the screen. Do definitely reach out to him. Have a conversation. You never know. You never know. Knowledge <laughs> is power. Jeremy, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I just want to say that knowledge is power, but knowledge applied is power because is we can have the knowledge, and if we don't apply the knowledge, we wouldn't get the power from it. No. You know, so it's just, you know, just as you're saying, you're going for your coffee grinder, you just want to do one thing today, and you are applying the knowledge, and that is, you, you are operating the power when you do that. Yes. So thanks so much for having me. <laughs> I'm so happy that you took the time to come out on the show this evening, this afternoon, this evening, tonight. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. Time. Yes, we do have an interested, interested lecture, and somebody is saying that it was very interesting having a conversation. So thank you again. Thank you so much. Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is the fifth of our six shows. Um, next Thursday. Next is our last show, and that is a conversation basically with myself and um, Yashi Carrington, a lady of PCOS okay. Positivity Coach. So if you're interested okay. in that, do stick around. She helps ladies, um, she coaches them into wellness then. And right, she nice. herself has PCOS, so right. we are going to have a conversation in terms of, we're going to be going down to what have we done and how, what do we do? So do to it, Jeremy. Excellent. Yes. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good night. Yes. All right. Take Bye. care. So guys, thank you again for tuning in. I it was a pleasure having a conversation with Jeremy, and it was a pleasure having you as um, in the audience. As I said. Next Thursday, I'm going to have a conversation with Yashi Carrington, and we're going to go through in terms of what we as women do to fight PCOS. So if that's something you're interested in, do look up for the show next Thursday at 8 p.m. Other than that, tell your friends about it, and thank you so much again. Have a good afternoon.
good night i'm going to have a good afternoon it was very nice to see you next week bye bye